when did you get involved in dogs and what type of dogs did you start with? Okay, my first, well, I want to say first dog I had was an Australian Shepherd Border Collie when I was 12 years old in Northern California, and he was just a dog and, you know, run around with us and everything, and we moved down to kind of Central Coast California in 1968 when I was 13, and so my dad gave him to a buddy of his on a ranch. He stayed up there. We got down here, and I was in high school, and I want to say in 1971, most likely, I saw a pit bulldog, and I was just, hey, that's that's cool. That's cool. Right. So I, I got into them, and... I got my first one, and it was a dog named Toro, and uh, I did not get the pedigree on him because I went, I was supposed to be getting the papers, and the guy that I bought him from got arrested for a bank robbery. <laughs> oh, wow. And he got put in, and while he was waiting to go to federal prison after he got convicted, I was still after his wife to get me the papers. Well, she tried to break him out of jail before they sent him to prison and she got caught. So I never got the pedigree on the dog, but best I could tell from what I remember talking with the guy, basically he was um, Tudor Colby and a little bit of the old time still tested Amstaff blood. But, you know, like I said, this was in the very early 70s, so there was still, you know, he might have had some of that. I can't remember, but my brother got a female a little later that year with papers. She had some of that. She was actually like a great, great, great granddaughter of Colby's dime. So, and, by old, so by old tested Amstaff, you mean the very start, like when they were still kind of gamey. Oh, they were still very gamey. And, like, the female that my brother got, both the parents were from guys who were active in the pit dog world with their dogs <laughs> at the time. The people we got her from, they, they weren't into that, but where both their dogs came from were, and kind of the same with the guy... Where I got mine, it was actually the father-in-law of the guy I got Toro from. He was active. Mm. And um, I didn't ever get to meet him. Like I said, they got locked up for <laughs> playing silly games, winning stupid prizes. Yeah. And this dog became my buddy. And, of course, he became dog aggressive. And next thing you know, having a pit bull and finding other people with pit bulls. I started finding out about the pit dog world. So, as far as American Bulldogs, when did you decide that... Uh, so, if I'm not mistaken, and if I am, I'll cut this out, but if I'm not mistaken, American Bulldogs was more or less your go-to? Um, oh, yeah, well, okay, I got my first American Bulldog, which was a registered female, oh, 27 years ago. And I haven't had one for almost two years now. I had to put my last one down at a little over nine, and I'm pretty sure it was cancer. But it was just, you know, he was falling apart and in bad shape. wasn't fair to try to hang on to him. And But that was... What I did pretty much for, you know, 25 years was American Bulldogs, and I ended up hog hunting with them because I'd been hog hunting with dogs since I was 21, and actually got an American Bulldog when I talked my wife out of getting a Rottweiler. <laughs> okay. And... One night, we hear a commotion out there, and it, this this was a 40-acre rooster farm. 
Well, we hear a noise, and he said, I need some help, boys. He knocked on the trailer door, and we go out, and he turned the lights on down there and opened the gate, and he had a, to me at the time, very big, like about 50-pound female pit bull terrier named Nat. And she had been given to him as a gift from Maurice Carver. Well, this thing went down there and grabbed the biggest raccoon I ever seen in my life and was just shaking him in the moonlight in a full moon. And they lit up five acres with, because uh, he had lights all down through his rooster yard. And this thing just crushed. And I remember saying, man, that's a big bulldog. And this guy goes, well, I got a eight month old pup or six month old puppy pit bulldog that's bigger than her. And I said, well, is it an Amstaff? No, it's a pit bulldog. And I said, well, is it, is it pit and bull massive? No, it's papered. And I said, well, what's it papered at? And he said, an American pit bulldog. Well, I had never heard of such a thing. Well, it ended up at the time, that's what American bulldogs were registered as. And I didn't get to see that individual dog because before the weekend he got out and got hit by a truck and got killed. But he took me to his partner's house and they had a kennel of probably six or eight big females and one male. The females, and they had a couple litters of pups, the females were all nice, friendly dogs. That male, I was looking for an ax in case we had to defend ourselves from being killed if we broke the chain. And they were using them to catch brushed up cattle after they had lost a cutting horse to a, to a, a, a young bull. He cut a, cut a good cutting horse out from under them. And this was outside of Somerville, Georgia, and I saw the papers, but I have no idea what the... Um, pedigree was but I got a, a poor picture and to me it put in my head what you might get from a pit bull boxer great dame cross mm -hmm. <laughs> big, big white dog. long yeah big big female shoebox head um, tall long good tuck real deep set ribs um, and then Later on, a few years down the road, I picked up a Dog World magazine at the feed store, and I saw ads from John D. Johnson, Kyle Sims of Sure Grip, and I think maybe Steve LeClerc or Joe Painter, several of them, and said American Bulldogs. And I said, well, that one's, that looks like what I saw back there. And that's how I ended up um, um, knowing they had changed the name. And when my wife wanted a Rottweiler, I talked her into getting an American Bulldog. <laughs> and that started 20, you know, 25 years with them. Do you think, in your personal opinion, do you think that the Pitbull Terrier had influence on the American Bulldog as far as the, the original breeding? I would say, and this is just all, in almost all cases, it's supposition. <laughs> I would say yes. I, I still, even in some of these big, very bully dogs, there's a chance that there is one, you know, 532nd, a pit bull back in them, and I, I almost hate to say this because at one point um, I helped a person that some years ago do a book, and they were from Germany, and they said, you cannot say that or they will kill our dogs over here because of the breed bands, mm. but yeah, but I, I would say without a doubt, and there's been some, some that, um, you know, have knowingly added it on paper. You know, the biggest, the biggest thing of that in the American Bulldogs was um, where they did the cross with a dog named Boudreaux Zydeco Dancer. 
Okay, and yes, that was from the very well-known and famous Floyd Boudreau line of, of American Pit Bull Terriers. And they um, put that dog in, and because NKC was allowing when you got to a certain percentage of another breed, you didn't have to write it on the pedigree anymore, and you could start calling it American Bulldogs from then forward. And then uh, if you still look on some old ones, you will find dogs where they'll show um, American Pit Bull Terrier back if you go back now enough generations and I'm told some of the pedigrees online if they see that now behind some of the American Bulldogs they're removing it they're mm. removing that portion of the pedigree and I remember of course I don't have it anymore but there was the old ARF Animal Research Foundation who mm. Had, had a stock dog magazine and they did started doing American Bulldogs well I remember them putting in the one magazine I had of theirs um, we want to welcome Mr. So and So um, to the ARF right. he, he has a kennel of like uh, seems like you know 20 something dogs and he is switching them all over to be registered as a, you know, American Bulldogs with ARF. They are currently all registered with the ADBA. So this whole kennel was registered registered American Pit Bull Terriers, and ARF, in their mind, that's okay to transfer them over and started calling them American Bulldogs. And what line was that? It, I do not remember the name of, of the guy. It wasn't a, a a big name guy that I knew of. I just remember it was in that magazine. And well, let me ask then, you this: um, as far as tell tell me, um, and if this if it's too like if you don't know exactly, we can cut this whole thing out. But what do you know about the watch the watchdog line? Okay, watch do uh, the line of American Bulldogs? Well, I knew that... Watch or just Watchdog in general? Watchdog in general, I knew was one bloodline. But then, I, okay. well, I knew it was one kennel, and then it split in different directions. Okay, Watchdog was K Casey and then his wife, Sheila Couturier. Okay, I've been friends with Casey for over 37 years. Um, Casey started out with American Pit Bull Terriers. Mm -hmm. And he was at one time a UKC confirmation judge. And then they kicked him out because Casey wouldn't sign a letter at the time around 1976 or so when the Animal Welfare Act amendment came out. He wouldn't sign a thing denouncing and promising to turn in anyone he knew that was involved in the pitting or testing of dogs. So he wouldn't sign that. So he got him and some other people got removed as UKC judges because of the political correctness of the time. And so Casey just went on his own deal and he started um, the American Bulldog Association registry and he started registering American Pit Bull Terriers and he was breeding he had some stuff he, if you if you go look back in some of the watchdog pit bull lines and well let me uh, I'll, here I go I'll jump around go in different directions no it's okay as far as I know and firmly believe in my heart and head and things I've seen some people try to say, oh, Casey added Pitbull to his American Bulldogs and vice versa. Mm -hmm. I am going to say no. I'm going to say in my heart and mind and what I've seen in my eyes of dogs from both his, all his stuff, I say no. He didn't do it. He And he started out with some, some decent bred 
the, the watchdog dogs. Now, there were some watchdog American pit bull terriers that came from Casey that people, they were written up in the Sporting Dog Journal. Um, but he wasn't, Casey was not active in, in the pit. And he, that's not what he was after was, you know, they were more man dogs. focused, right? Well, he wanted a larger utility type bulldog. And he used, like I'd said, that one female we had, uh, our, mine and my brother's the first female pit bull terrier. She had stuff in common through that old back, uh, uh, Amstaff stuff with a little bit of part of the stuff that Casey got and that's where the blue came from and I think it goes back to a, some of that blue goes back to a lady named Peg Allen in Florida if I remember correct but Casey also used a lot of stuff, stuff from Mason's Champion Hog that was no Amstaff that was a for real proven dog um, and he even had in some of his dogs he had a little bit of some Patrick's and some different other stuff that people aren't really aware of and he actually at one time owned and bred he obtained a breedable pair of straight bred Colby dogs that came were bred by Lewis Colby um, Bill and Iris Bill was like a 75 pound, real flashy, uh, like brindle and white points male, and I can't remember about Iris, but uh, those up. dogs probably go where breeding by pedigree from what was done in the past doesn't, you know, let's just say gameness is recessive. <laughs> right. So, um, but, on, and I ended up with one of those dogs over 37 years ago, one of those pups, because from my high school days, first thing you start finding out about papered American Pit Bull Terry, you started hearing the name Colby. So, I had to have one, so I got one, and that dog did not have what it took to be, you know, he didn't have what that dog breed was based on. And so he was never bred or anything, but there was another dog from that same exact breeding, and true or not, on papers on the internet, uh, sister to that dog I had named Sugar was bred to an outside male and became an ROM bitch. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and I can't remember now the male, but I had heard that from someone else about having some of the more modern day Colby dogs that they didn't make match dogs when you went outside Hello, world. We're back. <laughs> right. But, so, as, you know, and, and Casey with the American Bulldogs, he started out, he got some a few Johnson dogs, uh, some Painter Margentina dogs, but uh, what, what set him, what he wanted and was happiest with was when he managed to get White Fang. And White Fang was from bred by Kyle Sims, and I think Casey got him from someone else who had got him from Kyle. And he was Rippin' Woody, oh my gosh. Um, Rippin' Woody and either Jet Bitch or Slash and Sheena. So, you know, but Peter these were, these, Sheena, were, I mean, these were straight American Bulldogs? Oh, straight American Bulldogs. Wow. Okay. So, and, so and White Fang, White Fang was a dog of his. Yes, he was a big hybrid, and if if you if you heard in American Bulldogs of it, I'm sure you probably heard of 
Mountain Gator Red or Freddy Krueger? I've heard of Freddy Krueger in American Bulldogs, yes. Not okay. the other one. Okay, White Fang and Freddy and Gator Red were litter mates. Okay. All right. Uh, and, and he was a dog, man or beast. Um, okay. And um, everything, and Casey no longer has dogs. Um, well, he didn't as of several weeks ago when I last talked to him. But he's, st he's still alive and well. <laughs> right. But Casey and was... His, but that was his, that was Watchdog Kennels, though. That was Watchdog Kennels. And some of those pit bull lines of his ended up being acquired and used in Chaos Kennels and grapevine kennels. Yes, okay, so now you connected the lines for me. Uh, when it, I read uh, the stories about Watchdog, like those dogs were no bullshit. Those dogs were not about games. Um, well, I, I actually know a guy here in California who still has some straight, no outcross Watchdog pit bulls. Really? Yes. Oh my goodness, you gotta get me on the phone with this guy. <laughs> uh, I will. He actually <laughs> offered, I introduced him to Casey. He, he made a special trip to meet Casey at somewhere we were going to be together. And he came to meet Casey, and he offered Casey money to buy the watchdog kennel name. And this is probably 15 years or so ago, and Casey said, I don't think so. Not. I'm not ready. Actually, Casey still had... I, he might have had one dog left, and he still had a couple American Bulldogs. Mm. But And there is a guy, and I do not know the name, but there's a guy in the Midwest that kept the name, kept the blood going, mm -hmm. uh, last I heard. And just for your own input and maybe somebody else's, I, you know, I never followed those dogs, but some years ago I asked Casey something, and I didn't know there's a dog that I guess Chaos used the dog a lot. Um, in, in their breeding, it was a dog called Beelzebub. Yes, that was okay. it, the big blue dog. Well, well, I didn't know that dog was to me known as Boo Bubba. Well, yeah, I will try to see about getting you hooked up with this guy out here. I know. I'll have to check with him. <laughs> yeah, sure. Oh, uh, man, it would be an honor. Okay, well, you might know about this dog. Uh, I want to say about a dozen years ago or so, our daughter ended up with a couple or several <laughs> American boys. Sure. And they had a dog. I thought the dog was a physical train wreck. He was actually a very nice dog, not dog aggressive, but he was all headpiece and front end. His rear end was like he was double jointed. I felt they sold puppies from him, her and her boyfriend, who basically he's the one who started getting these dogs at the time, this guy. Um, were, this dog was a son of some, at the time, dog i saw him in that that american bully magazine they had called atomic dog yeah 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 because a friend of mine at the time gave me all the ones that had been printed at the time sure i had never even heard of the breed well then my daughter got him and the one they had named manson was sired by some at the time super high dollar well thought of american bully named schoolboy I'm not familiar. Yeah. As but, soon as they got away from... Um, now, the American bully for me was the notorious Juan Gotti. Was just, his, his offspring was just starting to cross to uh, Razor's Edge dogs, which were mostly uh, mostly APBT crossed with Amstaffs to be create, create kind of wider pit bulls. And that's where I first came in at, as a young buck. Okay, well, I saw some of those dogs. I've seen them on the internet, and I saw a couple, I want to say about four years ago at a, a dog show. 
in California, uh-huh. and it was an ABA American Bulldog show, and the other ring was because the ABA runs their, I guess, sister deal with the AMA, the American Molosser Association. Right. So they had all these other bull breeds, and they had all these exotic bullies, the XL, the this, that, the standard, the class. It's like, oh, my gosh. I'm well, that like, was the biggest uh, problem. It's like, why can't they just stick to one specific I, I'm like, Dang. no, and then I judged that same show the following year, and I judge shows, but not a ton, because I don't like to. It hurts my head, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> and there was some American bullies, but they were uh, big, had leg, athletic, basically white and blue, uh, looked like a big, what people would probably think was some of the what, old watchdog kennel stuff, but but it was different looking, you know. It was they're pretty, they were pretty good, and they were athletic. Well, when you talk about you know? when you talk about Beelzebub, um, that dog was huge. He was athletic. He was he could. I guarantee you, he could climb a six foot fence with no problem. Okay, now that was. A big thing with, and in you know those the the old the old magazines when Casey you know Casey owned the American Bulldog Review magazine right okay he owned Watchdog Kennels so kind of makes sense those books were loaded with pictures and ads for his dogs. Um, when I first took over the review and got the magazines from Casey, because I'd always had my own personal set, but I got those, didn't think nothing about it. It even blew Casey away about 15 years ago. I sold so many sets of those first 21 old magazines because of all the, the mainly the ads and pictures and some stories of the watchdog pit bulls in there. And because, you know, people that got dogs down from Casey Stuff would send them stories about their dogs. And I had people, hell, from one end of the country to the other, Canada, Hawaii, I was like, this is nice. Yes, sir. <laughs> they were ordering these old magazines from me. And... Um, <laughs> It, Casey did not even know there was still all the interest in those in his old pit bull line, and found out at the time there was three um, people had uh, message boards concerning watchdog bred dogs. <laughs> well, you know what's funny now is did you hear back in 2015? Um, the ADBA, <clears throat> separate, well, you know, the ADBA had all these uh, larger pit bulls that were, you know, weight pull dogs and personal protection And they dogs. made a change, yeah, because of yeah. the whopper dogs they and Chevy them, red uh, dogs. And- they called them um, working pit bulldogs. And Watchdog, like when you're talking about Beelzebub, um, that big blue dog. Fits into that now. And now they're breeding dogs that just, that they look just like him. They're slim, they're athletic, they're, um, but they're just really tall. They're tall, they're big. Well, see, because like I said, as far as I know, Casey selectively bred to try to get a larger utility bulldog within the pit bulls. And at the time, like I said, those old staff lines were, st- well, there's stuff well, coming out that? nowadays I mean, that what's they're wrong saying, no, they're coming out with stuff, well, you got to remember, where did the majority, where did, okay, what was, uh, like the Amstaff, their, their picture dog was Kobe's Primo. <laughs> right, which was, I mean, come on, that just looks like a, it looks like, it looks like a slightly more statured Pitbull Terrier. That's what it, it looked well, like. Well, Kobe's Primo was 
There is no doubt about what that dog was. Yeah, you know, he, he, he was, was a real deal. Terror. He was yeah, a good and dog. and look back at find some clear good pictures from different angles to, to really appreciate the thickness, the head, and the body, and the thickness of the entire dog. Al Brown's Tacoma Jack. Yeah, the Tacoma line. Now, see, that's well, where when I started doing. Yeah, that, but you can find you can find Tacoma Jack behind tons of pit bull terriers. Yeah, I don't know that he's not behind almost any line of Amstaffs. 